Bovine tuberculosis is a chronic bacterial disease of animals and humans caused by Mycobacterium bovis. In a large number of countries, bovine TB is a major infectious disease among cattle, other domesticated animals and certain wildlife populations. Transmissions to humans constitutes a public health problem. Aerosol exposure to M. bovis is considered to be the most frequent route of infection of cattle. But infection by ingestion of contaminated material also occurs. Infection is often subclinical. When present, clinical signs are not specifically distinctive and can include weakness, anorexia, emaciation, dyspnea, enlargement of lymph nodes and cough, particularly with advanced TB. Principles of the test Bovine tuberculosis infection in cattle is usually diagnosed in the live animal on the basis of delayed hypersensitivity reactions. The standard method for detection of bovine TB in the live animal is the tuberculin test. This involves the intradermal injection of sterile bovine purified protein derivative tuberculin and the subsequent detection of swelling at the site of injection 72 hours later. This may be performed using bovine tuberculin alone or as a comparative test using avian and bovine tuberculins as routinely applied in the Irish Bovine Tuberculosis Eradication Programme. The single intradermal comparative tuberculin test with bovine and avian tuberculins is used mainly to differentiate between animals infected with M. bovis and those sensitized to tuberculin due to exposure to other mycobacteria or related genera. The test involves the intradermal injection of bovine tuberculin and avian tuberculin into different sites, usually in the same side of the neck and then measuring the response 72 hours later. The test when carried out correctly is highly reliable and has been assessed under Irish conditions as being over 80% sensitive and 99.98% specific. This reliability, however, is dependent upon the proper intradermal injection of both tuberculins, together with accurate recording and reporting of the clinical observations at the time of injection and with accurate characterization, measurement and comparison of the reactions 72 hours later. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the correct application of the single intradermal comparative tuberculin test in accordance with the OIE manual of diagnostic tests and vaccines for terrestrial animals and the requirements under the Irish Bovine TB Eradication Programme. Those requirements are set out in the ER4 Terms and Conditions document which each veterinary practitioner approved to test in Ireland must comply with. This document is subject to change periodically. Preparing for the test Herd test itineraries with the planned date, time and planned veterinary practitioner must be submitted to the RVO through AHCS by midnight prior to the commencement of the test. The test is only valid if it is carried out in accordance with the itinerary submitted. Prior to commencing a TB test, the testing veterinary practitioner must have all the following equipment which must be clean and in perfect working order. This should include a handheld computer operating version of software approved by the Irish Department of Agriculture or an official field book and a hard copy of the current profile of the herd to be tested. If using a handheld computer, a backup manual recording system must also be available in case of malfunction. Practitioners must have a minimum of three individually identified McClintock syringes in perfect working order. The syringes must be serviced annually and the service certifications uploaded onto AHCS. These must be individually marked with coloured thumb knobs to distinguish between those used for avian tuberculin, marked red, and those used for bovine tuberculin, marked blue. The needle used should protrude between 2 and 3 mm so that a successful intradermal injection can be achieved. Spare needles, adapters, spanner and identification thumb knobs must be carried at all times. Syringe holsters containing cotton wool and either methylated or surgical spirits must be used for sanitation of the needles between animals. No other spirit can be used. Temporary tags and taggers must also be available. Temporary tags must be applied to animals without an official ear tag. In Ireland, it's prohibited to perform a tuberculin test on any unidentified animal. Reactor tags for the marking of reactors should be available. Veterinary practitioners should carry sufficient avian and bovine tuberculins to complete the test. 
Avian and bovine tuberculin are matched in terms of their potency and are packaged in the same box. Only tuberculins in paired tuberculin kits can be used. Both tuberculins should be within their expiry dates. They should be refrigerated until the day of the test and protected from light until required for use. Not doing so can affect the integrity of the test. Also required is a suitable clipping device for preparation of the injection sites and a backup. It is strongly recommended that electric clippers are used in preference to scissors. Two calipers, one for use and one for backup, to measure the skin fold at all injection sites and a thermometer and stethoscope for clinical examinations should also be carried. Test Day 1 Before commencing a test, the veterinary practitioner should check that the facilities and assistance provided are adequate for the number and type of animals to be tested. It's imperative that all animals to be tested are assembled convenient to the testing facilities, which must be such that the veterinary practitioner can safely and effectively conduct the test. All animals in the group to be tested must be tested whether they are on the herd profile or not, as they are all part of the same epidemiological unit. The veterinary practitioner should have boots and protective clothing and a supply of an officially approved disinfectant which is effective against M. bovis. To minimise the risk of the spread of infection, proper biosecurity and hygienic procedures, including disinfection, must be carried out before entering and on leaving each farm. A fresh plug of cotton wool soaked in methylated or surgical spirits must be placed in each syringe holster at commencement of the tuberculin test, in each herd, such that the needle of the syringe will make contact with it and rest in the methylated or surgical spirits between each injection. Tuberculin must only be used on the day in which the vial is opened. For biosecurity reasons, a vial partially used in one herd should not be used in another herd. That is, the testing veterinary practitioner should commence testing in each herd with an empty syringe and new vials. Used or partially used vials should not be discarded on farms. It's essential to ensure that the loaded syringe is free of air and contains the correct tuberculin before commencing the test. Backspray is a recognised failure of injection and can be caused by an air bubble in the syringe. Backspray can be recognised by seeing tuberculin on the skin. All animals to be tested must be correctly identified in accordance with legal requirements. The testing veterinary practitioner must be satisfied as to the identity of each animal being tested and that each ear tag number is recorded in full. The side of the neck on which it's proposed to carry out the test should be examined and palpated for any abnormalities such as swellings from previous injections or skin conditions which may interfere with the test. The correct location of the injection sites is critical to the accuracy and consistency of the test. The prescribed injection sites are situated at the border of the anterior and middle thirds of either side of the neck. The upper site for avian tuberculin is about 4 inches or 10 centimetres below the crest of the neck. The lower site for bovine tuberculin should be about 5 inches or 12.5 centimetres from the upper side in the same plane along a line drawn parallel with the line of the shoulder. In young animals in which there is insufficient space to adequately separate the sites, one injection shall be made on each side at identical sites in the centre of the middle third of the neck. This variance must be recorded. The injection sites must be clipped. A fold of skin within each clipped area is taken between the forefinger and thumb, measured with calipers and the measurements recorded. The tuberculin must be injected by a method which ensures that it is delivered intradermally. This is best achieved by inserting the needle obliquely into the deeper layers of the skin with the bevel edge outwards. A correct injection must be confirmed by palpitating a small pea-like swelling at each site. Confirmation of the pea-like swelling at the clipped injection site is critical to the correct application of the test. The injection of tuberculin in doses less than the prescribed amount or at incorrect locations is likely to lead to infected cattle not being detected or conversely, non-infected cattle being deemed reactor. Should a testing veterinary practitioner encounter an animal with a dirty neck, a thorough cleansing of the injection site should be completed before injections are administered. Occasionally, a veterinary practitioner may encounter an animal with localized abnormalities, which could interfere with the test. 
These may include reaction to a previous injection or skin conditions on or adjacent to the recommended injection site, in which case the other side of the neck should be used where possible. The details of such abnormalities should be recorded. Should the syringe fall or be compromised in any way, then the spare syringe should be used for the remainder of the test. Alternatively, the compromised syringe can be cleaned, repaired and needle replaced before use. Syringes should be emptied at the end of the test before leaving the farm. This is to prevent crystallization of the tuberculin in the barrel of the syringe, which could lead to malfunction and consequential inaccuracy of the tuberculin injection. The syringes should be stored empty with the settings in the full position. A thorough cleansing and disinfection of all equipment, boots and protective clothing should be carried out prior to departure from the farm. Test Day 2 – Reading Day The reading of the tuberculin test must be carried out 72 hours after injections. The reading time must be the same as the injecting time. Any deviation from the approved times of test must be notified to the Department of Agriculture prior to commencement using the email address tbreadingtimechange at agriculture.gov.ie Tests must be completed by the same veterinary practitioner on the same holding and using all the data recorded by him or her at the time of injection. Each animal must again have its identity verified in full and correlated with the initial recorded details. Each injection site must be examined, palpated and measured. Measurements must be taken carefully by placing the calipers across the broadest width of any reaction present. Undue pressure should not be applied and the findings must be recorded. All measurements should be rounded up to the nearest whole millimetre. Clinical signs such as diffuse or extensive edema, exudation, necrosis, pain or inflammation of the lymphatic ducts in that region or of the lymph nodes directly associated with a reaction to the tuberculin must be recorded. The presence of any of these signs at the bovine tuberculin injection site is always indicative of likely tuberculosis infection and animals showing such reactions must be deemed positive, irrespective of the measurements recorded. Reactions without associated clinical signs are described as circumscribed. The reactions at the injection site must be interpreted as follows. A positive reaction is a reaction with clinical signs of heat, pain, necrosis, exudation, edema and or an increase of 4 mm or more in the skin fold thickness. An inconclusive reaction is a reaction with none of the clinical signs and the increase in skin fold thickness is more than 2 mm but less than 4 mm. A negative reaction is a reaction with none of the clinical signs and no increase in skin fold thickness or an increase of less than or equal to 2 mm. The testing veterinary practitioner, having examined, palpated and measured the reactions at the injection sites, must then interpret the test and make a decision as to the result in accordance with the test interpretation chart. In the normal course of events in Ireland, standard interpretation will be used to make the decision. Severe interpretation, as set out on the reverse side of the chart, should be applied in accordance with official instructions. Therefore, it's advisable to carry a copy of the test interpretation chart supplied by the Department of Agriculture as an aid to interpretation of test readings. However, it should be noted that the final test interpretation will be carried out by the veterinary inspector at the regional veterinary office. A positive reactor animal is one which has clinical signs of heat, pain, edema, exudation or necrosis at the bovine injection site and or a reaction at the bovine site which is more than 4 mm greater than the reaction at the avian site. Reading the measurements Animal number 85 had first day skin fold measurements of 12 mm at the avian injection site and 16 mm at the bovine injection site. Examination of the injection sites 72 hours later reveals a small circumscribed swelling at the avian site and a diffuse edema extending to the subcutaneous tissue at and below the bovine site. Measurement of the avian injection site is 19 mm, an increase of 7 mm. Measurement of the bovine injection site is 40 mm, an increase of 24 mm. Since the reaction at the bovine injection site is 17 mm more than the avian injection site, the animal is deemed a reactor. 
However, as this animal exhibits clinical signs, in this case, exudation and edema at the bovine injection site, it must be deemed a reactor, regardless of skin fold measurements. An inconclusive reactor is an animal which has no clinical signs at the bovine injection site, but which has a positive or inconclusive bovine reaction, which is one millimeter to four millimeters greater than the reaction at the avian injection site. Animal number 31, had first day skin fold measurements of 9 mm at the avian injection site and 12 mm at the bovine injection site. 72 hours later, the skin fold measurement at the avian injection site is 16 mm, an increase of 7. And the skin fold measurement at the bovine injection site is 20 mm, an increase of 8. As the reaction at the bovine injection site is between 1 mm and 4 mm greater than the reaction at the avian injection site and as there are no clinical signs at the bovine injection site, this animal is deemed to be inconclusive to the test. A negative animal is one in which there are no clinical signs and either a negative reaction at the bovine injection site or a reaction at the bovine injection site which is less than or equal to the reaction at the avian injection site. For example, this animal had first day skin fold measurements of 12 mm at the avian injection site and 14 mm at the bovine injection site. 72 hours later, the skin fold measurements at the injection sites are 12 mm and 14 mm respectively. And since there are no clinical signs at the bovine injection site, this animal is deemed to have passed the test. Animal number 56 had first day skin fold measurements of 11 mm at the avian injection site and 14 mm at the bovine injection site. 72 hours later, the skin fold measurement at the avian injection site is 17 mm, an increase of 6, and 18 mm at the bovine injection site, an increase of 4. Since there are no clinical signs at the bovine injection site and the reaction at the bovine injection site is less than the reaction at the avian injection site, this animal is deemed to have passed the test. However, as there is an increase of more than 2 mm at the bovine injection site, it has not had a negative reaction to the bovine tuberculin and has not passed the single intradermal test. Animals identified as reactors at a test must be tagged with a reactor tag in the left ear and the details recorded. When animals are deemed reactor or inconclusive, the keeper must be advised by the testing vet that the testing vet needs to know whether the reactors, inconclusive reactors, have been mitigated in any way, to isolate the reactors or inconclusive reactors, to discard their milk in the case of dairy cows, that the herd is restricted and no bovine movements in or out are permitted unless authorised by the Department of Agriculture. That the Department of Agriculture may be blood testing reactors or inconclusive reactors or other animals in the near future. When animals are deemed reactor, the RVO must be informed on the day of the test or at latest the following working day morning. It is essential that all materials used are removed at the completion of the test and finally, of course, a thorough cleansing and disinfection procedure must be carried out prior to departure. This presentation by the Irish Department of Agriculture demonstrates the correct application of the single intradermal comparative tuberculin test. Critical elements addressed include equipment, biosecurity, test technique, test reading, data recording and test interpretation. Meticulous attention to detail is essential in order to carry out the test in accordance with Irish and international requirements. Deviation will produce inconsistent and inaccurate results. We would like to thank you for your interest and participation in the TB Eradication Programme. If you need any further information or assistance, you can contact your Regional Veterinary Office or ERAD. The Department of Agriculture wishes all newly qualified veterinary practitioners every success in their future careers.